Welcome everyone to today's AppRead.io uh, uh, webinar. It's, um, it's great to see the high level of interest. My name is Francisco Catan, and uh, I am the VP of Marketing for Exadel, the company that makes uh, AppRead.io. And I'm here with Max Cat, our main presenter. Max, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, Francisco. Welcome, everyone. Um, so I um, had developer relations uh, for Apri.io, and I'll be uh, building an Apri guys today, which uses GPS uh, or geolocation. Thanks, Max. So uh, as Max indicated, he's going to be uh, showing you today how to build a GPS tracking app uh, using the Apri.io platform. It's a great sample app, I think, uh, that you can use as input into many location-based apps, such as uh, fleet management, uh, or other apps where you need to track a device. Um, it's also a great example because it will show you how to access native device APIs, such as the GPS, and also how to integrate with uh, Apri.io backend services. Uh, but before we get started, uh, let me just take care of a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, this webinar is being recorded. Um, and it's going to be available for your review later on. You're going to get a link to the recording. In addition, we will publish it via our YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash appariio. Um, I encourage you to take a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, as uh, you will find many videos um, available there, including uh, a great uh, self-learning course. Um, we will save some time towards the end for a Q&A session, so please type your questions in the chat window uh, as they come up, and we'll try to answer as many as possible as, uh, as we have time for. So uh, let me quickly review the agenda before turning it over to Max. We're going to very briefly tell you about our company, Exadel, as well as Apri.io, and then Max is going to take most of the time to show you the product and, uh, and build an app. Uh, for you, and then we're going to go into uh, into Q and A. Um, so a little bit about Exadel. Uh, as you can see, Exadel is a uh, software development company that provides services, technology innovations, and solutions to some of the largest enterprises uh, worldwide. We, uh, in fact, initially built Apri.io to meet our own needs. Uh, we found that traditional enterprise platforms did not meet the needs of mobile, where the innovation cycles were much shorter, and there was a need for a much more agile approach. Um, we've been in business for over 15 years now and um, are profitable and uh, growing. Um, as I mentioned before, you can see some of the largest enterprises that are customers. Um, we, uh, we also have a very large number of smaller and medium-sized businesses that use Apri.io either for their own applications or to build apps uh, for their clients. Now, let me just turn it over to Max, and he can tell you about Apri.io and uh, show you the product. Uh, thank you, Francisco. So let me, I'm going <clears> to <throat> quickly run through the main features of Apri.io, and then we'll um, jump into uh, building an app. Um, so Apri.io is a class platform for um, creating mobile apps. It, it runs entirely in the cloud. It means there's nothing to download, nothing to down, um, nothing to install. Um, and then, of course, there is a public um, cloud version which um, we'll be using today. And there's also we also have an option for a private cloud uh, installation or version. Um, we um, we offer a visual UI builder. You build the UI with the drag and drop. Um, editor, uh, but at the same time, you get access to the source. Um, so you can write any custom HTML, uh, CSS, or JavaScript. And um, having both approaches is very powerful uh, because you get the speed of drag and drop, but at the same time, you get the power and flexibility and the customization of having access to uh, source code. Um, we get integrated backend services, and that means we get a cloud database for storing up data. Any any app that you want, purchases, users, customers, or whatever your app um, requires saving. We've got a push notification feature, and we've got a server code feature uh, that allows you to write custom app logic on the server using JavaScript, and of course that runs entirely on the Opry.io uh, platform. 
Um, we make it incredibly easy connecting to any third-party API, so anything available out there um, and exposed via REST, you can easily use or consume uh, in your app. And we got a really nice uh, visual mapping editor that allows you to bind services to pages. Uh, as for the type of apps you can build, uh, you always start with the mobile web app. Um, so basically, you get an HTML5 mobile app. We use jQuery mobile uh, for the UI components. Um, we also, every app also includes phone gap, and that means you can build an app for iOS, Android, uh, and Windows Phone. Of course, with phone gap or Apache Cordova, you also get access to device APIs, and of course, you get that in upgrade.io uh, as well, for, such as camera, for example. And in today's example, we're going to be using uh, geolocation. Um, we got a, a catalog of plugins, and these are out-of-the-box connectors to various popular API providers, such as Facebook, for example, and you know, LinkedIn. Um, the basic idea is that you can import the plugin, and um, you basically instantly connect it to the provider. So the, the idea is to even simplify mobile development further. Um, Excel REST Express is a component to Opry.io. And if you have any custom data source um, or a relational database or LDAP, for example, or a web service, and you would like to use it in your app, you can easily expose that source uh, via REST APIs. And REST Express does exactly that. It will expose the data source via REST. And then once anything is exposed via REST, you can easily use it in your app. Enterprise Mobile Safe, another uh, component to Opry.io, and it allows you to deploy very secure uh, enterprise mobile apps where the data on the device is completely uh, secure and encrypted. And of course, the communication between the device and the server is also completely uh, secure and encrypted. Um, and um, XRL, as uh, Francisco mentioned, Opry.io is created and uh, backed by uh, XRL. So having said that, um, this is what this is the plan for today. Um, as always, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll spend most of the time now uh, building an app um, that um, will track the GPS location. And again, we'll keep it simple. We'll basically, run the GPS tracking every seven seconds, ten seconds. I'm sorry, um, and we'll record those locations into a database. Right now, once you get sort of the basic app, I mean. You can really, that could be used for any other um, sort of um, verticals, for example, and so on, um, where you need the GPS. I mean, you can track it every 10 seconds, or you can track it um, less often or, or even more often if you would like. So this is entirely uh, up to you, OK? Um, now, we're going to be saving the location into the database. We're actually going to be saving the latitude and the longitude of that, of the current position. Um, and of course, then you can use um, a REST service such as, um, for example, there's a Google Geocoding API where you give it the latitude and longitude information, and it will return the address or the city. So uh, that's another example of this, where you can take take this app uh, further. So let me switch to the platform. All right. So let me um, create a brand new app. And um, so I'm in the Apps tab, and just again, just to review the, the apps, um, we got the apps, databases, push notifications, server code, um, secure REST. Um, I didn't mention this, but this allows you to keep sensitive um, app data, such as API keys or URLs, uh, on the server, so they're not visible on the client. Uh, and then the plugins. So let's start recreating a new app. Give it a name and click Create. Just a few seconds, we're going to get a brand new app loaded for us. All right, so this is the star page. And uh, notice that we're actually going to be um, doing one more web webinar end of March uh, on push notifications in action. So um, watch this space because we constantly update it with uh, new events. Uh, and what's going to happen. Um, so let's go ahead and open the first page, the start screen, which is the default page um, in all the new apps. So this is um, 
this is the this is the device, and right here we got our mobile components. So to be more specific, jQuery mobile components. Now the black theme is fine, but let's change it to something a little bit more colorful. Um, so we go to project app settings, and right here you can change the theme. You can see we got a bunch of different themes. You can also create custom themes, and let's go with something like flat UI, and then we can go. Um, back here and now every theme has swatches um, could be you know for anywhere from one to two to maybe seven or more um, swatches and the swatches are right here so we can do something maybe something like this All right so let's give this a different title All right and now let's build uh, let's build the UI um, so first we could put a label component. This is going to be my location. We'll get an input component. Delete the default text and I'm going to give this name of my the actual component name. It's going to be uh, my location. All right. Um, next we're going to another label component and this is going to be how often and put an input component. And actually, I said 10 seconds, but I'm actually going to send it to 7 seconds. And so just a little bit better for, for, for testing. Um, so we have to wait a little bit less. All right. And what I'm going to also do, I'm going to change it to uh, a number type. Um, then we're going to get another label here. And this is going to be GPS actually location tracking. And then we can put a toggle component and basically um, we can stop the tracking and we can enable the tracking again which is nice. Um, and finally just for testing purposes we're going to put another label component and this is we're going to get a timestamp when the GPS runs. You just kind of get a, an idea that it's running. Um, but this is again mostly for kind of debugging uh, and testing. All right. So this is the app. and. Um, the UI is pretty straightforward, and I can test this. And in just a few seconds, we can see. All right. Um, so this is uh, this is the app. Um, what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to make this up public um, towards the end, so you guys can try it. All right. But for now, I'll just continue uh, working on it. I mean, there's not much to try at this point. Um, so let's go back. Um, so the first step is we would like to get the geolocation, right? The, the location. And to create that service, we're going to go to create new. So this is where you create, uh, you know, new pages. Um, you can use JavaScript files, services, and so on. So we're actually going to go into service, and um, we're going to select geolocation and click create. Okay. And now because this service, so we're actually using it. This is a phone gap sort of. Um, service. Um, and because it's based on existing APIs, there is nothing for us really to do here. I mean, the request is set. The response is also set. Okay, so uh, nothing for us to uh, edit here. Let's go to start screen. And again, we're in design view. And as always, to create any data sources, including native device APIs, we're going to go to data. And we're going to select uh, device. And this is the only service that we have. This is the name is fine, and then we're going to bind. So nothing we're going to keep for the input. We're going to keep everything default, and then we're going to go to response. And so the two values we want to save is latitude and longitude here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save it in local storage. So I'm going to create a local storage variable, latitude, uh, LAT for latitude, create local storage variable, and then LNG for longitude. Okay, and mapping. So this is the visual. Uh, uh, binding editor that I mentioned earlier, all right, and also the the timestamp. So let's uh, expand the page and map the timestamp to the to label here. And as I said, this is mostly for debugging. Okay, um, let's go back uh, to UI, and we would like to invoke this the geolocation when the page loads. So I'm going to select Start Screen in the breadcrumbs. Right, this actually um, breadcrumbs just in general is very useful. To, um, to make it easier for you to select the various UI components on the page. 
especially when you start using components such as the grid or components where you the sort of container components where you put other components inside. So using breadcrumbs is always very uh, easy to be able to navigate the UI and select uh, the various components that you need. So I'm going to open events and I'm going to change this to page um, page show and um, I'm going to actually use run JavaScript. Right. So we're going to be writing a little bit of JavaScript and to invoke the service, um, you guys probably know that you can always invoke a service via this predefined action, which is very simple. Uh, but today we're going to be invoking the service via JavaScript. And again, this is an example that you can sort of customize and give you a lot of flexibility um, by you know, uh, writing JavaScript if you need to or if you want to. So geolocation uh, one, this is the name of the service or the instance of the service on the page, execute and then, all right, very simple. And again, the geolocation one, this is the same uh, name that's here. So this, the names need to match here. Um, and we also would like to um, basically display my current location right here. So we're going to go to data. I'm going to select geolocation one. On the success event, once the geolocation was um, successfully invoked, I'm going to go to select um, action. I'm going to run JavaScript. And I would like to read the data, the values from local storage, and update the UI component. And for that, I'm going to go to my uh, little cheat sheet that I have here prepared. And this is just really to save time, so you don't have to type. Uh, but basically, upgrade.io my location. This will find the location, the components in the DOM, and then that val, this is just a standard jQuery uh, function. And then I'm reading uh, using local storage API to get those values from local storage. All right. Um, that's it. Let's save, and we'll run this. And we can go to uh, uh, more uh, to the test page, and we can hit refresh here. This is usually a little bit faster than having to launch the page. Awesome! So you guys can see it's actually running. So this is my this is my location. It only runs once uh, because uh, it only runs on the um, on page uh, page show. So the how often and this tracking, of course, doesn't work. And this is the timestamp, um, all right? So this shows that the, the GPS uh, tracking uh, tracking works, uh, which is uh, which is nice. Um, now, when you guys test it, and I'll mention this again, so notice that my browser is tracking my location, and there's a little icon, OK? So you would need to uh, enable location tracking for this domain. Okay, upgrade.io, right? And uh, this is uh, Chrome, and all the browsers will actually tell you uh, that, hey, this site is trying to track your location. So you need to enable it, otherwise it will not it will not work. You mean you as a consumer, as an end user of the app? Exactly, yes. Right. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys see it's very common when you go to a, um, to a site on a mobile device, it's, you, 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 you get a message asking, hey, this site wants to know your location, and you can say yes or no. So this is the same thing. And I think in general, um, I think it's a good uh, idea uh, to uh, let know the user, the end user, that you know this particular app might be tracking a location, and that user can then uh, say yes or no to, to tracking. All right, so let's go uh, back to the app builder. Um, so we got this. now. Next step is we would like to invoke or um, track the location every, you know, we put seven seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I will go um, back here and basically, well, before we do that, let me go. I need to create a variable here, a global variable. And I go to um, create new and then JavaScript. And this is fine, fine for the name. OK, so what this is nice, this is a, uh, this creates a global variable. It's going to be available 
on all the pages. And uh, why do I need that? Is because it will allow me to stop and restart the interval, basically, uh, the automatic uh, tracking. Um, going back here, and okay. So basically, what I'm saying is that this is the global variable that just defined. I'm doing an interval here, and I'm invoking the service, the geolocation service, uh, every uh, basically seven seconds. Right, so it's seven, right? So that's why, um, and now this will allow us later to actually stop the interval, I mean, stop the execution, okay? So that's why we need to make it a global variable in this case. But anyhow, we invoke the service, uh, and then we set an interval to be invoked every seven uh, seconds. So let's uh, save the event, say, let's go back here and refresh. Something is, let me see here. It's not what we want. Let's close this. Let's I think, so what I did is, um, but this is just a kind of a, a development process. Um, I forgot to change, if I go back here, uh, you guys can see that the, um, the uh, name, the tracking interval, that same the component, which is right here, but in my case actually has a default name. So we need to change the tracking interval, right? And we can save and give it another test. So you could see a little, it was just doing something crazy. Um, so, and then I realized I forgot to rename the component. So let's give this another try. But at least you guys know that this is real development. These things, these uh, things happen, um, and pretty often, especially with when Max is on the keyboard. <laughs> All right, uh, just gonna try. Actually, um, oh, this is fine. It opened in the new uh, window instead of a new tab, but that's fine. Let me just close this and me, here we go. This might be a little bit better. Um, so while um, while it's loading, so basically uh, once once we are able to invoke the geolocation every seven seconds, and again you can you, you can uh, modify. Um, the, the interval. Uh, what we're going to do next is that we're going to define, we're going to create a database and every every new GPS uh, measurement will we'll save it uh, into the uh, database. Um, not sure why it's taking a little bit longer than it should um, with the with the test here, but um, why don't we, while we're waiting, why don't we just go ahead and start working on the um, on the database? And we'll come back here uh, in just a few seconds. All right. Um, so for the database, uh, we are going to click database. All right. And I'm going to create a brand new database. And we'll call this uh, and click create. All right. Let me just check. Well, let me close this. It shouldn't be taking shouldn't be taking that long. Let me click test again. The only thing, no. Sometimes, um, sometimes uh, when it's not loading, there might be due to JavaScript errors. But um, I just opened the console and um, there are no errors. So that's uh, that's good. But let's go back to the database. Um, so we create a new database. I'm going to create a new collection. 
and uh, we'll call this um, locations. Click add. All right, uh, we got a new collection, and then I'm going to create. Well, here we go. So let's see. All right, and um, okay, so you can see now it's tracking uh, every seven seconds, and you can see that uh, there is uh, the time, the timestamp changes every every seven seconds or so. All right, so we're tracking. Um, we're, so we're um, able to invoke the geolocation. All right, uh, but let's. Um, um, well, we, we can keep this running, I guess. Well, actually, it's actually once you switch because it's a mobile web app right now running in the browser. Um, once you switch to a different browser, actually different window, it stops. It stops tracking, right? So that's not the same case if you install the app on the phone. You can actually put it um, in the background, and uh, it will still continue tracking your location. And again, this is in the case if you build the binary for uh, Android uh, or iOS. So let's go back here. So we got our location collection, and then we're going to add one column, and we'll call this uh, place, for example. And then for the type, it's going to be geopoint, create column. Okay. We got our database set up. I'm going to go now back here, and I'm going to create a service to save the data. Create new uh, database services. And uh, GPS location DB, import selected services. This is my collection and create. That's the only service that I need. All right, the service was instantly created. I can open it. Again, because this is auto generated, uh, there's really nothing to do. If we would like, we can test the service. And I'm going to go back, actually, I'm going to copy this uh, location. And the only thing is, has to be uh, an array, and they can test. And we can test the service, and we can see, so this means that the value has been successfully um, inserted. And then we can go to uh, the database. I can click Refresh, and you can see that uh, this is the uh, entry that I was just uh, inserted via test. I can also go into full screen. Right, and if I would like, I can delete everything. All right. Going back here, the service is done. We are going to uh, go to data. We're going to select service. We're going, this is the service that we just created. Save location. And then uh, binding. Uh, now, so we do need to, so we basically need to get the values from, uh, from, from local storage. Now, and because we need both values, actually what we're going to do, we're going to run JavaScript. We're going to read the values directly from local storage. So uh, whenever you do mapping, you can write um, a little bit of JavaScript. And again, just heading to my cheat sheet, um, this is just how it looks. It basically just reads the values from local storage. Uh, and puts them into an array, okay? So here we go. Uh, and one more thing we need to do is, uh, so once we determine the location, right, we can save the location into local storage, we would like to invoke this service, the REST service that saves stuff into a database. So we're going to select geolocation. On a success event, we're going to uh, invoke service and save location. All right, here we go. Save. All right, and um, let's go here and refresh. All right, so it's just waiting here a few seconds.
Well, here we go. All right, let's see, in just a few seconds. All right, so I'm going to let it run um, just so we can get uh, a number of entries uh, into the database. Now, of course, the, the next thing is you'd be able to enable and disable tracking, right? So if you're building an app, you want to uh, probably add a feature where the user can disable or enable tracking, all right? Um, all right, so let's um, switch to the database and let's refresh. And you can see that these are all my locations. Uh, now, the numbers look the same for obvious reason uh, because I'm not, I'm not moving. Uh, and also because um, this is I'm on my laptop, of course. Um, so, you know, the accuracy will be different when you're running on a laptop versus a phone because if you've got an actual you know, GPS enabled, so the location is usually more precise with a mobile device than uh, with the laptop, which I think uses the IP address uh, to determine uh, the, the location, all right? Um, all right, so the next step is, and if I hit refresh, actually, you see, um, now that I switched to a different tab, it actually stopped tracking because uh, I hit refresh and uh, I don't get uh, new values, right? But the last thing before we actually build the binary and install it on the phone, and then again, I'll share this link with you guys. You can download the Android binary and run it. And um, we, we want to be able to enable, disable the button. So let's go back here. All right, we're using a toggle. I'm going to open event. And I'm going to um, run JavaScript. And again, just very simple. Um, so basically what's happening is that if um, if the interval or if the uh, GPS is not currently running, right, it's actually off, I'm going to turn it on again, okay? Now, if it is on, I'm actually going to clear, basically stop invoking the server, right? And so that's the reason I had to create this GPS interval um, as a global variable, right? So let's save. And actually, let's close this preview page. And let's go to the database. Let's actually clear all the values. All right, and let's launch this. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll let this run. Uh, for a few seconds, well, for, so we can have a number of uh, records into the database. So, all right. So let's see what hap what's happening here. Refresh. All right, so we got four uh, values here. And let's now um, let's disable this and see. So basically, the timestamp shouldn't be updated anymore. Mm. That's so. That's one of the reasons we put this uh, this uh, timestamp. We're printing it on the on the phone. Okay. And then, of course, the database as well. I should probably have five or I guess four, maybe five. Yeah. And again, this is not the timestamp is not uh, is not changing. So that means the GPS tracking uh, is now off. And then, you know, you want to enable it back. We'll turn it on. All right, and here we go. We can see that it's running again. So, and um, I'll let this run one more time and we'll switch to a database. And if I hit refresh, you can see that I get more values now. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to make this up public, and you guys can uh, actually try this now. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to um, start the binary build for Android, right? And um, you'll be able to install it, again, if you have an Android device, and, and try it. And again, uh, once it's a hybrid app, 
um, you can actually put in the background. In other words, you can launch another app and it will be running and tracking the location. So again, if you're building an app where you need to determine the user's location constantly, I mean, so this is an example uh, for it. So let me first launch the build. And um, to launch the build, we go to export and binary um, Android version here. And again, it's probably going to take a minute or so uh, to build. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and it will tell us uh, when it's ready. Um, let's go ahead and make this up public. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put links for you guys. And you can also scan this QR code. If you have a um, uh, QR reader on your phone, this could support Android or iOS or any other platform. Um, but I'm going to put this into the chat window for you guys. You're going to click on it. So let me see, this is a uh, width frame. Right, and of course there's also the one without the mobile frame. All right, so give this a try. Uh, and of course I should be able to see a lot more locations. Um, so mine is off, but I should see a lot more locations in the database. There we go. You can see how. So. All right. So hopefully, um, and it would be if you guys want to put a um, a message uh, into the win into the chat just to let us know it's working. Uh, but I mean, based on these values, I can see that someone is running the app. Um, I guess we don't need to see the ACL, which is for security. All right. So we can see we're getting different locations here. Right, you can see at the top here. All right. So this is good. It's working. Uh, let's see if our, it's still building the APK. So we'll give this a few more uh, seconds. All right, I guess additional 10 seconds. All right, we can get, let's see what's happening here. So we can see we're getting a lot of data. Wow, lots of users. Yeah. Let's uh, have the app working on their devices. That's awesome. Yeah, but again, so, so far you guys are running a mobile web app and just hopefully maybe this is the, here we go. Um, so now you can scan this QR code uh, and actually install, again, this is for Android. Um, you can um, you'll be able to uh, launch the app um, on your device. And I'm going to scan it myself here. All right. And saving under my phone. Download complete, okay, and just launching the app. All right, um, all right, opening the app. All right, and here we go, I can see that um, it's running now on, on, on the device. All right. Very good. Uh, to refresh again, and again we can see, um, you know, based on time and also the various locations that we're getting, uh, that um, um, that it's working. All right. Um, so that's basically. Um, um, so that's basically it for the uh, for the app. Uh, portion. I'm going to go back to our slide uh, deck. So again, this is basically what we did. Again, the only difference is that instead of 10 seconds, we use 7 seconds. And this is just to make it go uh, a little bit uh, faster. All right, so let's go um, here. 
All right? Um, again, our next webinar is going to be on uh, on push, um, and that's in two weeks, I believe, right? March 26 is two weeks from now? Three weeks. Um, yeah, actually, um, yeah. I think it's three weeks from now. Three weeks, yes. Uh, so please sign up um, uh, on our PlanCast page. Also, be sure to uh, follow us on PlanCast so that you get notified of all future uh, events. Uh, we're going to get to the Q&A in just a minute, so please uh, take a little bit of time to uh, uh, enter your questions in the in the chat window. Uh, and while we do that, let let me tell you also about uh, uh, South by Southwest. Uh, so if uh, those of you that may be in Austin this weekend, uh, we're going to be at uh, South by Southwest, and we have a um, a challenge, a developer challenge going on with our partner Edmunds um, to um, develop uh, mobile apps uh, that simplify the, 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 plus, the process of buying a car for consumers. So uh, take a look at our uh, page, appre.io uh, slash Edmunds for more information and uh, come uh, visit us uh, at, uh, at the event uh, in Austin uh, this weekend. And uh, we're just going to leave this page up uh, while we answer your questions uh, to, um, uh, so you know how to get a hold of ourselves, Max, myself, uh, and also some links to, um, you know, lots of, we have lots of resources for developers, documentation, self-learning videos, et cetera, et cetera. So please, uh, uh, please take a look. So why don't we uh, get started with the questions? Um, uh, Max, do you want to? Sure. Let me just. Um, review them, look at the list here. All right, I see there's some some comments on audio, so hopefully you guys were able to um, to uh, hear us. And again, we'll we'll have a recording um, uh, available um, probably tomorrow, yeah. right on 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 YouTube. Um, so there is first question: if there is AutoCAD API, um, you know that's a good question and. Probably, I mean, I would go to the sort of the source AutoCAD and see if they provide uh, API. Again, if it's available, now if it's a REST API, you can easily use it. I mean, it could also be JavaScript API. And again, you can also, of course, uh, use it as well. Uh, another question, if there's a way to um, sort of mass upload to the database, yes. So you can actually, uh, you can import uh, data uh, in a CSV format and I think also JSON format. So yes, you can definitely do that. Um, another question is um, sort of this: what is the size or number of columns rows the database allows? Um, you know, it's a good question. I don't think there's sort of a limit. Um, you're sort of going to be the only limit that I mean we definitely have is the size of how much storage for your account, right? But I don't think there is a limit as to uh, how much data you can, I mean, on a sort of database level. Again, it's only on your, for your account. So, uh, another question is, how can we manage progress bar uh, wheel appearance, uh, which shows up, um, which shows up each time the service uh, is running? So, yeah, the little thing that's moving, that's kind of the Ajax indicator, um, and this is just a jQuery mobile indicator, or you can customize it, you can hide it, um, it's entirely up to you. So one of the, I mean, what's, what's really powerful is that the app you're building in AppReed.io is you're starting with a standard you know, jQuery mobile app. So whatever jQuery mobile allows you to do, whatever the browser allows you to do, you can do. Now, you, know, you might need to customize, write some custom CSS or JavaScript to do particular things, but you're only limited by what the browser sort of can do or support or what jQuery mobile uh, supports. Um, another question is, so there's, if there's a lot of data being transferred, how, how to track progress of, uh, of data uh, sent? Um, yeah, I mean, you would also, you know, you could add some indicator, some progress bar that, that would show you that. Again, um, you could, you would be able to do this with some custom JavaScript, uh, for example. Uh, let's see the next one. Um, another question, but can you, um, can you show location, um, 
using the location information can you show a map? Absolutely. Um, we don't have much time in this particular webinar, uh, but maybe it's a good example for a uh, good case for next webinar. Actually, Use the yeah. location. Yeah, and we have uh, a number of tutorials. Yeah. If you go to our tutorials page, there are a number of tutorials that use the Google Google Map component. Yes. That's on a basket of objects. You can just drag that onto the screen and then m map it to the latitude and longitude, and it'll show you. Exactly, yeah. So there's the geocoding API, which, again, um, uh, you can also use to get the uh, the address uh, from the location. Okay? And that's basically the next question. How would you use the latitude longitude value to identify a country? So you would pass it to, again, to geocoding, Google's geocoding API. There are probably other APIs. And whatever that API returns, you know, you can then, you know, see in which country or where that the user uh, is. Um, now, you know, I gave an example of using Google's API, but I'm sure there are other APIs that will basically do the same. Um, question, is this for Android only? Uh, no, it's not for Android only. In, I, in, you know, in this, in this particular example, I built for Android only, but you can as easily build for iOS, and I can show you that. You can see there is Android, and then there's also iOS. Okay, so again, just for this particular example, I built for Android, but you can build for iOS as well. All right, let's see what else is here. Um, how would you set up the app to only store the location data on the local um, device? Um, well, I mean, the this app that's run, I mean, when you run the app, it's actually the geolocation information and local storage is only sto stored on, on your device. Uh, no one can, no one else can sort of see that. Um, so, I mean, if I'm understanding the question correctly, again, the geolocation is stored only, I mean, your geolocation information is stored only on, on your device. Now, it does go into a database, um, I mean, if you don't want to save it into a database, um, you don't have to. So, um, what are the performance implications um, when you run the GPS? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, running the GPS all the time will probably drain the battery uh, faster. Um, again, this has nothing sort of to do with the operator platform. This is more, you know, the device and how optimized uh, sort of the geolocation is. Uh, and so on. So, uh, what about an, another question? What about that to, to show mappable fleet locations? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, you can do that. Um, you just get all the locations and you use Google Map API to basically plot all the points. Um, so, again, um, just kind of an important point is you can pretty much build anything you want, right? Uh, some things will need to be sort of developed, um, you know, coded uh, by you. But again, you're only limited to what the browser can do or what the underlying, um, you know, visual components can do. So let's see what else is here. And uh, we're seeing, so there's one comment that uh, a user is congratulating us on reaching 100,000 users, uh, so thank you. Yeah, we just recently, um, in February, we uh, passed 100,000 developers. It was actually in January. January, on yeah. Apri. Yeah, we're, uh, we're almost 110 already. On Apri.io, uh, so thank you. Uh, question if um, the question do I do we need a geo server? Uh, no, I mean it's not required. Um, I'm not using a geo server here. Again, I'm using the device uh, geolocation capability. All right, let's see what else is here. Um, so, how does the mobile database handle a huge number of records? Is there uh, the um, you know, it doesn't handle sort of out of the box. It's, again, it's up to the app logic. I mean, if you want, you can delete records after some time, or if it reaches, you know, X number of records, you can delete it. Um, so you're in full control. I mean, sort of it's entirely up to the app logic uh, what to do, you know, if you reach 
uh, reach uh, X number of records in your database. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, question is, so um, how to get the actual location name instead of uh, just the latitude longitude? Um, you can do that again. You just need to invoke uh, another REST API, and I've been mentioning Google's geocoding API. Uh, you can do that. So you give it a lot of the longitude information, and it will return uh, the, the, the location for you. Um, one more question. So if there are any plans to support BlackBerry 10 platform, um, you know, we don't have any media plans to do that. Uh, but having said that, you, you can deploy this app on a BlackBerry. So first of all, it can be a mobile web app. Right? And actually, BlackBerry 10 has a pretty powerful web browser, mobile browser. Um, so you can run this app there. You can also, you have two more options. You can export the HTML resources and then uh, use a Honga build service, right? And to get a binary for BlackBerry. Uh, and the last option, you can, again, export the HTML resources. And I believe BlackBerry has tools to build a binary with HTML. So you can do that uh, as well. So, all right, I think we're almost out of time. So let's take um, uh, one more question, um, or maybe two at the most here. Let's see. So, my question is it correct to say we can pair this with the unique user registration and then build a back end admin UI? that pulls the database in real time. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, you can build this, you can add user registration if you would like, and of course then, you know, that user will, will see uh, only his or her uh, locations, and then the admin might be able to see all the locations. So again, you, you're in complete control what exactly, sort of what you build, what the app does, uh, and so on. So um, contact, uh, contact information, yes, let me go back to the slide, and this is the contact information, right? So all right, um, and again, just if you guys want, um, we can, I can switch to the, um, uh, to the um, Android uh, barcode here, so you can scan if you would like. Um, my question is, if we're looking at uh, a Tizen uh, platform, um, so we are, yes. I mean, it's a platform we're looking at. Another platform we're looking at is um, Firefox, uh, the mobile, their mobile o right. OS. All right, and let's do one last question. Um, so I think the question is you mentioned briefly, but can you confirm the operator that you can continue track location when the app is in the background? So the answer is yes, it can, but it's not operator I/O. It's the app built in operator I/O. Right. So it's really important that the app is just a platform to create the app, right, or the apps. But the app is running either in the browser, as a mobile a web app, or installed on the device. Now it does talk to a database, right? But the actual app is running in the browser or in the device. So to go back to the question, yes, yeah, if you build a hybrid app, it, you can put in the background, it will continue tracking your location until you kill, until you exit the app. All right? Um, and I guess we're out of time. So I guess okay. really, really good questions. Thank you. If you guys have more questions, uh, please uh, send them send them to us via email. There we go. Yeah, I opened the page um, again. Um, be sure to join us at the next webinar and uh, also, um, uh, you know, contact our support uh, uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you have more questions. Support is available 24 by 7. Thank you again for joining and um, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, terminate the webinar at this point.